Okay, YouTube, just got a little video here for you. Um, Midweeker, it's all about the Rover V8 engine. I watched this video about three years ago and, I've, and then I couldn't find it at all on the internet anywhere. And I thought it had been removed, but last night I did actually stumble across it. So I've recorded it. Hope you like it. It's all about Rover V8 engine and the production. It's titled The Circle. It's all about quality control, etc. And um, they're just brilliant. I love. I, I do like my old videos, though. So you know, not to everyone's taste, but you may like it. I hope you do. Some of you, some of you seem to really enjoy the V12 Jaguar video we put on last Wednesday or Tuesday. But what we'll say is in the comments, I noticed it got a little bit heated with some of you guys saying they were um, no good and blah de blah and all the rest of it. But you know, I think. We're all entitled to our opinion, but if we can just all keep it nice and nice, let's make it a nice place to come and watch. I don't want any stress, anxiety. This is no good. That was rubbish. I had one. It blew up. Just keep it to the good memories, you know, and it's all nice and positive. A nice place to go. That's what we want. Right. Hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. I'm deep in the middle of Hillman preparation. Got a sweat on. Got my crossbow back on. Do my trailing arms now. I'll have it rolling by. 11 o'clock tonight, I reckon. And that gives me Thursday, Friday to titivate it. Anyway, I'll let you enjoy the video. See you when, uh, Sunday at 7. Bye for now. Oh, and if you and if you go to Brands Hatch at weekend, come over and say hello if you want to. And uh, it would be good to meet you. Great. See you now. Bye-bye. Okay. Frankly, I never really thought it'd work. At least, not as well as it has. Twelve months ago, I'd have said the whole idea was just another stupid scheme dreamed up by some bird with nothing better to do. Mind you, that was right at the beginning. You come along too. Uh, book a table for four. That's right. And uh, tell Mr. Smithers to come along. All right? Bye. Well, Bob, what do you think? At the moment, not a lot. I want to know a lot more about it before I make up my mind. But I tell you this, it sounds like a waste of bloody time. And I've got enough of my players, it is. You'd have to chair a meeting for an hour or so once a month, that's all. That's all? Well, there's probably a bit more to it than that. Yeah, that's what I thought. Anyway, what's wrong with the existing quality setup? I and mean, why do we suddenly have to have these circles all over the place? There's no use looking at me, Bob. I don't know much more about it than you. The plant director's willing to make a try of it, and Charlie here has picked us to be the guinea pigs. Yeah. Well, look, let's get it straight. The idea is that you want me to pick four or five more volunteers from the machine shop, and together we're going to start looking at the quality problems and try and solve them ourselves. Right? In a nutshell, yes. Exactly that. Well, what are you quality people going to be doing in the meantime? Sitting on your backsides? Not much chance of that. We carry on as usual. Well, if you're going to carry on as usual, what's the bloody point? Look, quality's everybody's business, or ought to be. You know that as well as I do. At the moment, if there's a problem, it gets dumped in our laps. All right. That's what we're there for. But we're not magicians. We can't come up with all the answers because we're snowed under. Okay, we tackle the more serious problems, but what about the others? And the little things we never even hear about. They all affect the quality of the cars that come off the end of the line and there's no use closing our eyes and hope to go away because they won't. And that's exactly the kind of problem that quality circles can deal with. Look, I'm not saying we haven't got our problems because we have, same as any other shop. But whether we can sort them out ourselves, that's another thing altogether. Come here a sec, Bob. Just take a look down there. There's 200 blokes down in that shop, all doing 200 different jobs. And when it comes to their own particular job, they're the experts, every one of them. They don't cock up a job for fun. If there's a problem, there's a reason. And nine times out of ten, the reason's down there. You give them a chance to tell you the reason, and you've near as damn it got the answer. That's why quality circles have so much going for them. They'll be part of the shop floor. No red tape, no laid down procedure, no bull, just a group of mates helping to solve problems where they actually happen. And that's a downside easier and cheaper and probably a downside quicker than us lot galloping in from outside. Well, it seems to make sense. In theory, at any rate. What's going to be your role in all this, Charlie? Quality coordinator. Sounds grand. Basically, it means I'll be helping set up new circles, get them started, monitor progress, act as link with plant management, all that sort of thing. Well, Bob, how about it? I reckon it's right up your street. Well, I'll see what I can do. But I don't go much for this volunteering lot. You know, you two should have been in the bleeding army.
You'll be sorry. What is it? Well, he says it's chicken, but I'm not so sure. I'd just like you to tell me next of kin. Uh-huh. You don't see you in here very often. No, well, I wanted a word with you two, so I thought I'd risk it. Getting hold of the other volunteers wasn't as hard as I thought it'd be. Lionel Reed was one of my senior foremen when he wasn't watching West Brom. <laughs> Bit of a funny old bugger, but he knew his job inside out. Roger Dunn was a mate of his, only a young chap, but dead keen. I'd be keeping my eye on him because I reckon with a bit more experience he'd make a good foreman. Anyway, I don't know whether they felt I'd made him an offer they couldn't refuse, but they both agreed to give it a try. Excuse me, Arthur? Arthur! Ideally, we were looking for six people altogether. A couple from the supervisory side, a couple of union blokes and two others. Arthur Morris was the shop's senior steward. Decent sort of bloke and we got on very well most of the time. He liked the sound of it right away. All right, count me in. Any idea who else? Who do you reckon? You know the other stewards better than I do. Oh, Nobby Clark, Terry Masterman. If it were me, I'd go for Terry. I know he's got a lot to say for himself, but he talks a lot of sense. If you like, I'll have a word with him. Right, I'll leave it with you. Finding the last member of the team wasn't quite so easy. People were interested, all right, but I suppose they were just worried about how much the involvement would be. I'm not interested. Well, you've heard about our quality circles, aren't you? Because you should be looking for another member, you know. Would you like to join us? Oh, no. No, I don't. No, no, no. Like I say, about these quality circles, we're setting them up in various departments. We're setting one up here. We need six. How about you? Do you feel like doing it? John! Gobblers! Surprisingly enough, it was Masterman who came up with the final volunteer. All right, come on, Alec. How about it? I don't know. I'll think about it. Oh, bloody hell, I'm not asking you to marry me. I'll let you know tomorrow, I promise. No, I'll toss you for it, right? Eds, you're in, tails, you're out. I'll get it. Don't you trust me or something? Now, come on, call. Eds, you're in. There's a training session next Wednesday morning, nine o'clock. You can be ink monitor. Don't look so bloody miserable. Remember, today C-section, tomorrow the world. <laughs> tomorrow the world? Silly sod. So remember, the golden rule is keep it simple. Keep your meetings simple. Keep the organisation and the records simple. Identify simple local quality problems and above all try and keep your solutions simple. If possible we want to avoid suggestions that are going to involve outside departments like production engineering. They haven't got the manpower and they haven't got the money to cope with the masses of new projects. They're up to here already as it is. So let's try and keep it in the family. But suppose there's no other choice. You know what I mean? Suppose there is no simple solution. What happens then? It just gets shelved? Now look, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying we shouldn't involve other departments, only that it ought to be as a last resort. Bound to be the odd times when senior management are going to have to weigh up the pros and cons and give us a decision. And when that happens, I can feed up the details through levels one and two. And if the results will justify the cost, management will probably play ball. Don't forget they're committed to improving quality standards the same as the rest of us. <laughs> Bully for them. <laughs> right, any more questions? No, 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 sorry, no, sorry. No, Fair enough, let's wrap up. Thank you all for coming and um, see you all at a press meeting week Friday. Yeah, right. Thanks so much. Oh, Bob, before you go. Are you happy? So far, yeah. What about the others? Oh, it's a bit early to say, isn't it? We normally get stuck into it, but they seem keen and that's something. Good. Uh, look, you may as well take these now. It's all the management information I could get on known quality problems in the machine shop area. You've probably seen some of it already. If you haven't, it might help you sort out a couple of projects we can discuss at next week's meeting. Unless, of course, you've got some ideas already. Well, I have as it happens. You want me to tell you now, will it wait? These bloody scrap rates on the V8 cylinder blocks. What about them? There's got to be something we can do about them. Every month we're top of the plant scrap list on account of what those things cost. The castings alone are worth over 100 quid each before we even lay a finger on them. How many are we losing? Between 12 and 40 percent, regular as clockwork. Well, how long have they been going on? Ever since I can remember. What makes you ask that? Oh, I just wondered if there'd been a gradual build-up. You know what it's like, stick a new line in, everything's great to begin with, and slowly things deteriorate. You know, people don't stick to the process sheets. They take shortcuts, that sort of thing. Before you know it, you're in dead trouble. I wouldn't have thought it happened all that much. Oh, you'd be surprised, boy. I made a mind from vehicle assembly was telling me about the problems they've been getting over there, particularly on the paint side. And all because some blokes thought they knew better than the process sheets. Oh, it took weeks to sort that lot out. Well, that's what management's frock. I mean, it's their job to see that people do the jobs the way it's laid down. I mean, if everybody went around all doing their own thing, we'd be bloody lucky we'd turn out a car a week. And God knows what the quality be like. Anyway, Roger, the block line is your pigeon, so what the hell's going on? Well, most of it's due to handling. You know what that alloy's like, won't stand being knocked about. Anyway, it don't affect the quality of the car, they never get that far. But quality's got as much to do with keeping scrap costs down as building good cars, chum. 
God knows how many millions we lose in a year. Dead right. And I reckon it's worthwhile looking into. Agreed? Yeah. Right. Now, who's going to take it on? What's that, Roger? It's his neck of the woods. What, on my own? Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. What about getting three or four fellows from the section with Roger as leader? They're the people doing the work, so they must have some ideas. Get them involved. That's not a bad idea. See? And that was how I got lumbered with the very first problem. <sighs> In at the deep end. So I began at the beginning, or rather the end, thinking the scrapped blocks might provide a clue to the cause of the damage. No such luck. It seemed that any bit of the casting that stood out proud from the rest was likely to get damaged or knocked off altogether. No common denominator. It could happen anywhere on the line. Anyway, me and the other three on the subgroup put our heads together. We never had formal meetings, just occasional get-togethers during breaks. That's all we needed. We reckoned the best thing to do was work in twos. Two of us looking at the problems of getting the blocks from machine to machine, and the others checking what happened once they got there. It's amazing how you can work in a place for years and never notice what's going on until you really look for it. Talk about Heath Bloody Robinson. All right, the V8's not a volume engine, so there's none of the sophisticated mechanical handling you'd need to shift the stuff about, but even so, it's a wonder anything survived in one piece. We found blocks smashing into one another because the roller runs were too steep in places. There were a lot of stuck rollers that swung casting skew with and caused more blockages. And whoever designed the guide rails provided nice little gaps to snag passing blocks and stop them dead. I tell you, there were more jams than on a supermarket shelf. The blokes on the line had their work cut out and all. Not just to keep things moving, but manhandling the castings from track to track. No lightweight, them things, and it don't help when the track's chest height in places. Kept them fit, but that's about all. The other two found the same, with the operators having to hump blocks on and off machines. There were places where it could be made a lot easier, if only somebody had given it a bit of thought. What it boiled down to was every time a bloke had an awkward lifting job to do, the block was at risk. OK, those are the problems. What do you think we've done about them? Have you had time to think about it? Well, we've had a few ideas. Ah, I bet we're going to make them out of plastic. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Go on, Rog. The recommendations of the quality subgroup are as follows. One, reduce the steepness of the roller tracks in those places necessary to slow down the pace of the incoming blocks. Two, See if maintenance can introduce new schedules to service the rollers regularly to prevent them seizing. Three, redesign the guide rails on the tracks to eliminate the gaps that cause blocks to jam. Four, arrange for new track to supply each machine station and transfer finished blocks back on the line, leaving the operators to concentrate on the machining process. Well, that seems fairly straightforward. Anyone want to add to it? Uh, there is one other thing. The blokes themselves. The suggestions we've made are going to be a great help, but they're not the complete answer, at least we don't think so. Almost every man on the section has to handle castings at one stage or another, and that's how a lot of the damage gets done. To be honest, we're not quite sure how to tackle that one. Well, that's simple, but it will talk to them. You can't expect them to guess what we're trying to do. They'll just have to try to be more careful. Yeah, it seems like the only way, Roger. Have a chat to them. Have a word with old Frank. He's been on the job for years. He'll know what to do. And that's what we did. Between us, we had a word with every chap in the section over the next few days. Frankly, I was surprised at the reaction we got. Can you be a bit more careful, we said, and we weren't told to get stuffed once. And in the end, it all paid off. Roger, you got a minute? What's up now? Here, have a look at that. Latest plant scrap rates. I thought you'd like to see them. The V8 blocks are down from 40% to below 3 and still going down. How about that? I don't believe it. <laughs> Neither did I, but they're based on the last three weeks' production figures. I tell you, I nearly fell out my bleeding chair. Maybe there's something in these quality circles after all. Anyway, with one good success under our belts, we started getting a bit more adventurous. We did everything we could to get the blokes on the shop floor involved. As far as we were concerned, it was their circle, not some sort of private club that went on behind closed doors. 
We made sure everyone in the shop knew the permanent members of the team and got them to come across with any ideas on quality problems that might affect their own particular job. Before long, we had a steady flow of simple projects we could get our teeth into. And from time to time, even plant management began to ask us to take on particular problems. Anyway, the Lordships have asked us to look into it and we reckon we can tackle it. Well, you'd best tell us what the problem is first. Well, according to this, the inspection have been finding a few cases of piston knock on new cars whilst out on test. And even worse, some of the cars have found their way into the bloody showroom. I mean, you can imagine what the dealers are about to say about that. Anyway, the gaffers want to know if we can get to the bottom of it. Well, it sounds like an assembly fault to me. Some joker sticking an undersized piston in the wrong pot. Yes, that's always a possibility, but they've already asked the assembly shop circle to look into it at their end. Of course, the only other thing it could be is faulty piston grading, and that's down to us. Shouldn't take much time to find out. It's in my section. I'll check it out and let you know. For anyone who don't know it, the V8's a pretty sophisticated power unit. Compared to volume engines, the degree of tolerance to design spec is fairly tight. We had all the gear to make pistons to spec, no problem. But when it comes to grading them for size, well, that was something else. Old Ted had been grading pistons ever since the unit went into production. It seemed a simple enough job, until you asked him about it. Every piston had to be one of four sizes to match up with the tiny differences in the size of the bores in the block. Back in the old days, when the V8 was in only one model, he was grading something like 50 an hour. Now it was getting on for 200. Mind you, like he said, it wouldn't surprise him if he dropped an occasional clangor and stuck a piston in the wrong pile for stamping. His mate had to watch his step and all. He only had to clout one of them things a bit too hard and it deformed the piston. Not enough to notice, but enough to cause trouble in the unit later. So what do you reckon the answer is? I get if I know. Frankly, it's a bloody miracle there haven't been more problems. It's not old Ted's fault, nor his mate. It's a system they're using, it's so bloody archaic. You mean it's open to human error? Yeah, but it's not only that. These things are so susceptible to temperature. Old Ted showed me. He graded one, cupped it in his hands like this, and after a few seconds checked it again. Due to expansion, the thing was a size bloody larger. What does that prove? Well, it means on a hot day, Ted can grade some pistons to one size, and if they arrive on the engine assembly line during the evening shift when it's cooler, could have shrunk to a size smaller. And because the block's that much bigger, the temperature hardly affects it. Hmm. Sounds as though I'd better have a word with production engineering, see if they have any ideas. I'll let you know what they say before the next circle meeting. You can decide what you want me to recommend to plant management, OK? Cheers. Yeah, cheers, Charlie. Oh, and uh, well done, Alec. You've done a good job. You're going like this, you know, mate. You'll be running this job. I can go to help you. And this is what Ted and his mates ended up with. A piston grading and stamping machine that not only does the job automatically, but takes the temperature of the shop into account at the same time. Ah, oh, it cost a bomb. But as it happened, production engineering had already earmarked some money for improvements to the line, so we were lucky. Still, there'd be no more cases of piston knock, so I suppose it was worth every penny. Oh, well, I should do something about it. Yeah. Uh, Hello. Sir. Hello. 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 Uh, not at the moment. Can wait till you're finished. All right, Tom. Uh, well, just grab a seat. I've only got one more thing to discuss. Uh, the joint project with the assembly shop circle. That's been your baby. Do you think you could explain it to Babs, just what you've been up to? Well, from the beginning. No, you Bert, from the bloody end. Tell her. All right. Well, if you're sitting comfortably, Barbara, I'll explain. Oh, come on, get on with it. Well, uh, this was something we got involved in a few weeks back. It was one of them projects that started when some bloke on the shop floor had noticed something funny, but he had the sense to tell somebody about it. This fellow works on the engine assembly line, putting together the bottom half of the V8. Once he's done his job, he should be able to turn the crankshaft over dead easy. But he kept noticing some units was a bit stiff, and occasionally one would be very stiff. Anyway, he does the right thing, and he tells his foreman, who happens to be the chairman of their quality circle, and a mate of mine, because we played dance together. We were called Fred then. So, they whip the unit off, bung it over to the inspection double quick and tell the quality people what's going on. Well, they check the thing's been assembled right, which it has, so they strip the whole lot down and check every single part against the engineering drawings. Conrods, crankcase, pistons, every bloody thing. We'd had occasional reports from dealers about engines seizing up, but no real problem, so it was a bit of a mystery. Eventually, 
It turns out to be the crankshaft. A tiny lip on the face of the bearings left over during the grinding operation that's found in the big end of the conrod. In other words, it was down to us. The first we hear of it is when my mate sends one of his foremen down to one of our meetings and dumps the problem in our lap. It had become one of his circle's projects and the quality people were happy to let us sort it out between us and see what we came up with. I work on the crankshaft section, so I was the one who got lumbered. The thing with crankshafts is they've got to be dead accurate and the machine Taffy was using was getting on a bit. Oh, it could do the job but it relied more on Taffy's skill as an operator than modern technology to get it dead right. On the, two side, you've got the, combi side. the problem we was talking about only involved half a thou, and short of sticking in the latest machine worth God knows how much, I really couldn't see a way around it. As good as Taffy was, there'd still be the odd crankshaft that was duff, and he couldn't even check him after because he hadn't got the gear. I tell you, it really had me stumped. Dear, you look right cheesed off. Caught the missus with the milkman, have you? No such luck. It's that bloody crankshaft business. I reckon we're stuck with it. Well, why don't you have a word with them over on the con rod line? Maybe they've got some ideas. Well, I know. What the bloody hell's it got to do with that lot? Oh, nothing except they make the part that's finding on the lip in the bearing. I've been thinking. If there's not much we can do our end, maybe they can modify the big end of the con rod. Worth a try. You know something? If you were any cleverer, you'd play for West Brom. Gotcha. So, that's what I did. And the solution was simple. They reckoned they could increase the size of the chamfer on the inside edges of the big end with no problem at all. Once that was done, it really didn't matter if the crankshaft bearing had a slight lip or not, because there was nothing to bind on anyway. Of course, we had to get clearance from engineering before we put it up to management, but they saw no problem, so we went ahead. And according to assembly, they've had no stiff engine since. I reckon old Lino deserves a medal, don't you? Oh, yeah. yeah? Well done, Lino. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Which is why I'm here. You remember I put you lot up for the Company Quality Circle Awards a couple of months back? Well, I heard in the grapevine that you've been shortlisted with two others for the best overall performance this year. Thought you'd like to know. Oh, great. 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 Good. Good. Mind you, you're up against circles from the design department and the trim shop, and they're pretty bloody good too. But we should know in about a month. Oh, oh, oh all right. 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 Well, I don't know about all of you lot, but I'll believe it when I see it in bloody writing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's it, lads, till next month, and the uh, times will be posted up on the notice board. And all I can say right now is, thanks very much. Well, right. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you, Barbara. You're welcome. See you, too. See you, Barbara. Bye-bye. 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 Uh, it'd be nice if you get those typed up on my log as soon as you can. Well, that seemed to go off all right, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you should have seen it when we first started. <laughs> See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. The funny thing is, I quite enjoy it now. And I think the rest of them do too. They're involved, you see, and it shows. On top of that, we've managed to get a fair bit done since we've been going. Gradually improving things a bit here and a bit there. It's not just about solving quality problems, although that's the most important thing. It's had a spin-off that affects everybody in the shop. Better working surroundings, making some of the jobs easier and all the rest, you know. I must say it's turned out a damn sight better than I thought it would. In fact, it's a pity somebody didn't think of it before. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that little video there all about the quality control. So, for me, the biggest part, I was fascinated to learn Rover V8 engine. What a cracking engine they are. This lug that lives on the side of the engine. I never understood what it was for, but I know now it's for the tracks when they ran down the assembly line. So, uh, brilliant. Um, absolutely fantastic engine. I hope you enjoyed the video. If I don't see you on um, Sunday at 7 o'clock, then I may see you on fr Saturday at Pranzach and um, we'll get a full upload on the uh, weekend's progress at, at Pranzach for midweek next week. Uh, but this Sunday's video will just be about the preparation of the car this week. All right, bye for now.